Hello everyone, I'm um, sitting here today thinking about Boogie2988 and how he said he needs $7,000 a month or um, almost $84,000 a year in order to survive. And that's a lot of money. Now, I'm sure he makes a decent amount of money on YouTube uh, because he has 4 million subscribers. And if we look over at his last 30 days, which I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull that up on Social Blade. Um, I'm sure he made a decent amount of money on YouTube. Now, Social Blade is is obviously an estimate, uh, but over the last 30 days, 1.594 million, which is actually a 94, 95.4% decrease over the previous um, 30 days, but that's also because there was some sort of 34 million view spike somewhere in there. I don't know what that is. Um, but the social blade low end of estimate has his earning at $398 a month and his high end of earnings at $6,400 a month. So he has a Patreon. He's got, I actually found out the other day that he has an OnlyFans. He has, um, channel memberships. He's got Twitch. He's got YouTube. He's got all sorts of way to make income. And, um, he also makes the YouTube money. And by making the YouTube money, there's a few things he can do there. He can keep that money, he can invest that money, he has a house that he can sell, and I believe he still owns his mother's house that he can sell. But my question to Boogie is, you know, um, if you need $7,000 a month, that means you need $5 1,400 times. So, go on Fiverr. Uh, set your cameo to five or ten dollars. If you can get fourteen hundred people a month to give you five bucks, you're good. Now, will fourteen hundred people out of four million subscribers give him five bucks a month? Probably not. But I could see him trying that. I've read somewhere or heard somewhere that content creators who want to make content creation their full time job and not like live a um crazy lifestyle can survive if a thousand people give them five dollars a month, which is a five thousand dollars per month or sixty thousand dollars per year. Yeah. Yeah, sixty thousand per year. Which is not a lot of money when you think about what some content creators make. Some content creators are making twelve, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a month. Uh, the most I've ever made in a month is about a thousand from TikTok, which was really nice. And I ended up actually just using it for some nice stuff that I needed. But that was my best month. On average, I make maybe 150, 200 bucks a month on TikTok right now. Um, but I'm, my goal is, of course, to increase that and to have more income at some point. But right now, I understand that it is not my full time job. My full time job is actually being a college student. Um, so, I can work part-time, I can make content part-time. This week we're on break from school, uh, so I'm able to actually do a whole bunch of stuff this week that I've wanted to do for a while, which is fun. But I have just gotten sucked into the rabbit hole of Boogie2988 ever since they, uh, Mike Klum re released that video, um, that documentary, that hour-long uh, documentary. And it just amazes me to think about the money situation that Boogie's in. Now, he said he made $1.2 or $1.6 million on YouTube in 17 years, which is wild um, to me, because that's less than $70,000 a year, which I understand. There's down years, there's pre-adpocalypse, post-adpocalypse, pre-getting big. Like, it took a while for him to get to a million subs, because YouTube didn't have... YouTube wasn't what it is today back then. Like, when he got the Where's My Mountain Dew video, that, had, that went everywhere. That, that Where's... That Where's My Mountain Dew video, 25 million views. Now, I wonder how much money he's made off of that particular video. I'd love to see that. But then I was thinking, like, $40,000 a year on women. Like, okay, Boogie, you understand that there are other ways to make money because you're spending it. Now, no, I'm not suggesting he does that, but I am suggesting he suggest and tell people about all the ways they can give him money so that way he can be like, okay, I'm going to just uh, do this, and now I have the $7,000 a month I need to live. The other thing I would do if I were him is I would cut down on the uh, escorts and stuff simply due to the fact that, that that is a massive expense. Most people... If they spend money on an escort, it's a one-time thing, a two-time thing. It's an every-once-in-a-while thing. It's not a constantly thing, and it doesn't equal $200,000 over three and a half years. But 
that's what happened. And and then the fight. I don't understand exactly how he um, spent twelve, eleven or twelve thousand dollars on the fight. Um, but that means that to me means either he's lying about the fight or the fight was not a real fight. And it was sort of like one of those things where it was just like, yep. Which which the second thing seems more likely because I don't see any reputable sanctioning body like WBA, World Boxing Association, sanctioning that fight because there there was a risk that, that one of them died um, in that fight, which wouldn't have been good. You don't want that. Um, so it made me think that it wasn't like a real fight with official stuff, so they were like, okay, you gotta, you gotta make your own way, and that's how he spent a thousand dollars on Ubers. I've probably spent a thousand dollars on Uber and Uber Eats in my life, um, so not, not in a week or two weeks, um, but it is what it is. Like, ten thousand dollars for a fight doesn't seem like a lot of money either, especially because I guess the fight sold four hundred thousand, and he got ten thousand up front, Obviously, there were more people on the fight card than just him and Wings. But they both should have got more from that. That was actually theft of surplus labor value with that. But that's a whole other thing. I'm not trying to get into Marxism here. <laughs> but Boogie should have Boogie and Wings should have got paid more than 10k for that. Um, especially if the fight sold 400k. Um, like most fighters have a clause in that, like UFC fighters, boxers have a clause that say we get X plus Y, where Y is X percentage of the pay-per-view gate receipts and all that. So, you know, they make, they make money, which is really, you wouldn't do boxing if you didn't make money. Like I would not let somebody punch me for no, for, you know, I would not get into a fight from, for any reason other than money like that. Um, I'm looking at, I was looking at some of the stuff that he did, and I'm like, some of his content you can think is pretty cool. Like, when he did magic stuff, that was fun. I think a couple years ago, he actually, like, okay, it might be like 10 years ago now, I think he actually had a um, preview for one of the cards. Which, anytime you get a magic spoiler, it's always super cool for your channel, because it'll get you a little bit of a pop in views, because the people who like magic will go to your channel. Even if they don't like you, they'll go to your channel and look. Like, if you remember who the quartering is, he used to be um, MTGHQ, um, until he got banned from magic, but he had a whole situation where he made a ton of money off magic at first, because he had a viral video about pulling a planeswalker, so like... Make content like that. Make game. He should make more gaming content. He should make videos every day, one or two videos a day. That's what I do on TikTok. I make a couple videos a day. Like I, I'm guaranteed to make two videos a day right now on TikTok, simply because I'm doing an NBA NHL prediction series. Um, but seven thousand dollars a month in Arkansas also seems like a lot. I, but like $163,000 left on his house at $2,200 a month. So that's, that's, some. Um, even without interest, 163000 Right about 2200 That's 74 months. That's six years? Six, six years, two months of, um, that he has left on the mortgage, and I guess it was a 15-year mortgage, so, but also he's got, he's still got interest to pay, um, so let's call it seven years left on the mortgage, but the house is worth like $450,000, he could sell the house, I don't know what his mother's house is worth, the old house, but he could sell that house, he could even sell it as is, for a quick infusion of cash, like, let's say he sells that for 100k, drops 50k on the mortgage, and then what happens is the mortgage is down to 113 k still has to pay 2200 a month, but he has 50 k puts 50 k in savings, and then pays down debt, because his savings, savings would actually be smart to just keep it there, let it build some interest, not a lot, but the interest rates are higher now, so I'm assuming if he wasn't silly and refinanced the mortgage during the last couple years, well, realistically the last year and a half, if he didn't refinance, he'd be in a good spot. 
sell his mother's house, get an infusion of cash, put half of it towards the mortgage, put the other half in savings, live off, the, like literally a savings account, live off the interest, and then once he's living off the interest, use that, and then start building up his YouTube career again. Live stream three, four times a week. Make videos one or two times a week. Or one or two times a day. Make videos about stuff people like. Like right now, the topical thing to do is make videos about Boogie2988. But um, people like football. People like baseball. People like gaming. He made a video about Hogwarts Legacy getting snubbed for Game of the Year. Which I don't agree with, but um, he made a video and it's controversial. So that got views. That got views. Do stuff like that. That's what I don't understand why Boogie2988 is complaining about money all the time. I think he's just lying about money. I, th I think he's probably like a secret millionaire. But we'll never know for sure. I I'm, well, I mean, I guess we might someday. But yeah, where did all this money go? But $7,000 a month. I'm trying to break down how I could spend $7,000 a month, and I don't think I could. All right, see y'all later. Like and subscribe.